Okay, so as Fister narrator, I learned um, how much, I mean, I always kind of knew this, maybe this is something I knew before, but it just kind of reiterated the fact that how much you present yourself, what costume you put on really affects how people treat you, you know. If I didn't have on my, my name tag that said Anja, not Anja Seeger, resident narrator, people just thought I was like an uh, outgoing um, hotel guest. But really, when I had the name tag on, all of a sudden I, w I had a job, I had a position. I think it's partly because when I had the job, I looked much younger than I was and I didn't look like someone who would be like a, a hotel dignitary. Whereas like the person who had been narrator before me has um, like two decades on me and so people are always asking her like oh do you live here and like she said that other narrators before her also got that question no one asked me that question once when I was narrator and I think it was because I looked so young I didn't look like someone who would just be like the resident um, person who lived in the hotel even though that's not what that position is I learned a lot of things I learned that like there's a lot of men who are about 50 years old who are on a business trip right now who think that they can be unfaithful to their wives and family by telling the nearest young lady, I would tell you why I'm here, but I'm not allowed to tell you the mission I am on. Like, they all think that, like, if they say they're 007, that's like, that's going to be a really per- I'm going on a- I'm going on a, um, I'm going on a rant here about something that- But I'd say what I learned as a narrator mainly is that you just have to go and, um, I mean that job is really an extrovert's job. And, um, even though I consider myself an extrovert, I feel like that job made me more extroverted because your job is just to approach people. And even today when I go to the hotel, I get a little stressed out because I start looking at people like, who could I approach? Who could I just like break into their conversation and be like, hi, I'm the resident narrator. I'm looking for stories. Do you have one? And um, I think mainly I learned that anyone who's 50 or older, all you have to do is ask them one question and then you pretty much just shut up for the next two hours and do not interrupt them because they will not stop talking and they will tell you interesting things that you don't know and you had no idea about because you just haven't been alive long enough. And um, they're much more opinionated than than other people because they feel that after five or six or seven or eight decades they can um, say with complete certainty what they think it's all about. Not everyone but a lot of people. Which, is, which goes contrary to like you know my wishy-washy agnostic view of like everything like I don't know what that's about but older people frequently are like let me tell it to you. Let me tell it to you. It's like this. I'd say the most typewriters I've owned at one time was probably 11. Um, but maybe 12 if you count the one I just kept for religious purposes. It's just decorative and then I would make like an altar of knickknacks around it and pictures of my ancestors and um, but, yeah, I moved through a lot of typewriters, mainly because people know me as the typewriter lady, and they go, hey, I got a typewriter in my basement, um, would you like it? And I always say yes, because you never know what you're going to get. I mean, I've gotten, my brother, it's funny, he was going for a walk one day, and he saw a typewriter, and it wrote in cursive, and then, um, he brought it home, he used it for a couple years, and then he thought he gave it to someone, or he wasn't sure what he did with it. And when I started getting really into typewriters, I was like, what? Anton, you had a typewriter that wrote 
in cursive and you don't know what you did with it? Like, that's a special, special object with great power. And he's like, yeah, I don't know. I think I might have given it to like my old roommate and they moved or something. But then he just decided to go clean the attic and he brought it out. And it still smells like my brother's house, like, um, like attic and incense and, um, and like cat. But um, it writes in cursive. And um, that's, that's one of my prized typewriters, but frequently I collaborate with other artists and other writers, and since I don't have like stockpiles of dollars, I'll frequently um, put in a fresh ribbon, show them how to use the typewriter, and then say, hey, take it. And for every typewriter that I get rid of, I get three more, so it's okay.